the next is me. Can you hear me? Uh, the next, uh, oh, probably I should get rid of this. It's not as exciting as security and other spaces and the <laughs> 40 patches or so RFC, uh, but uh, uh, the, while working on the main block, uh, boot and everything, uh, I've noticed that uh, we have a really nice representation of the memory with struct page, struct folio, memory descriptor, whatever it is for the runtime and the, the core memory management to work on. And then we have several coarse grain memory representations like uh, memblock, the driver CFS interface, uh, E820 that lives for entire system life. Uh, there are also things that uh, PowerPC do and so on and so on. And the, we also have the resource tree and system RAM under IO memory sources, which is kind of awkward to my view, but uh, so maybe I'm just overreacting, but I think they all should be consistent, at least consistent. And probably we don't need as many of them as we do have now. Uh, so, oops. The original idea of the project was to create the, a single representation for everything there is uh, representing a the physical memory in large chunks like uh, start and flags. Uh, so I'll start with how it, it what's going on today around this uh, area. Uh, we start with firmware that uh, detects the actual physical memory in some way, either it's uh, in a non-volatile uh, storage or the firmware may run some memory test to identify what the deems are actually installed in the system. Uh, the firmware uses uh, some of the memory for its own needs. Uh, for x86, for instance, uh, there are XCPI tables, CFI services that remain uh, live during the system lifetime. And uh, then the firmware creates some memory map for the next levels. It can be bootloader, kernel, uh, any of them. Uh, uh, each architecture uses its own unique way to pass uh, the memory map to the kernel. And uh, there is also sometimes additional way to pass uh, new topology and the, the node division to the uh, Linux. Uh, for instance, x86 uh, uses E820 to create a the initial memory map, but the 820 doesn't include new information that's read after some time eventually from the ACPI tables. Uh, during early boot, kernel actually doesn't know what its physical memory is until some point at setup arch. So uh, for the most time, setup arch passes the physical memory map uh, created by the firmware. Uh, at the same time, usually architecture creates its own view of how uh, the memory is seen. Uh, I think it's true for everybody except uh, risk V and ARMS. Uh, and then uh, the memory ranges uh, from the architecture specific representations are passed to memblock and then memblock feeds them to the generic memory management. Somewhat in parallel, uh, there is also setup of the NUMA topology and the, the assignment of uh, memory ranges to NUMA nodes. And again, uh, there, there could be parts of this information in memblock in the end and parts of this information uh, live in additional structures uh, for several architectures there is a uh, numa something and numa something else and, and then uh, this is the most amusing piece uh, we have the system ram io memory resource uh, that implement it the, that is initialized on every architecture that supports kexec uh, not every architecture actually has system ram in the iomm in proc iomm uh, so there are some hard-coded uh, places where we had the uh, ram areas to the kernel uh, to the proc iomm essentially and the 
also uh, reserve uh, kernel code data. Again, it depends on architecture. The format is not really consistent. The, the diagram here is from x86 on risk five. I think it, the KXX folks went wild and they reserve like uh, everything. Wait, wait, Palmer. Yeah, I think it, I think it's actually just broken. Like uh, we've got some patches on the list. I think there's not having our own internal representation. I think has led to some sort of cyclic dependency between the various memory allocators being set up, and it, we're just pushing bugs around in a circle. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So and then. I think a driver core in it uh, call or driver in it call there is setup of the memory CFS for architectures that support uh, memory hot plug. Uh, and uh, although most of the time Linux memory management uh, or Linux in general doesn't rely on these coarse grain representations, we still have some places that uh, need it. Uh, for instance, uh, x86 uh, makes uh, E820 mapped any exported symbol, and it can be used by any module, actually. Uh, there is a <coughs> function that converts physical address to the desired node for NVDIM plugging, for NVDIM hot plug. A PowerPC keeps uh, the they call dynamically reconfigurable memory information, and uh, this uh, represents the, their view of the uh, hot pluggable memory. S three hundred ninety is a, has a weird way of keeping track of what memory was there originally and what memory can be passed to the second kernel with KXX. Uh, there is also a nice function that walks the resource tree to understand if page is in RAM. Uh, and there is um, walk system RAM range to do something for every piece of uh, system RAM memory because uh, quite frequently it's not contiguous. And uh, both ARM and ARM64 rely on memlock and runtime to determine whether the page is in RAM. Uh, I think it's mostly on IUMF pass, but uh, there could be other places as well. Uh, maybe some folks from ARM would give more details. And there is also KXEC that needs the information about system RAM layout. Uh, currently, for the most part, it comes there from PROC IOMM. Uh, KXEC parses PROC IOMM, finds system from areas, find uh, reserved areas, and uh, make sure that uh, KXEC is loaded at the holes between the old kernel and the second. I, I, it tries not to fill the places where the first kernel lives. Uh, there is uh, something that x86 only can use uh, that leaves it sys firmware memory, uh, like a comment on KXX says, we have an architecture independent way of parsing it, uh, but essentially on x86 because it directly exposes E820 uh, structure to the sysfs. It, why is it called IOMEM? Uh, it's a uh, Originally, there was IO memory resource that listed all PCI uh, bars and other IO memory resources. And when KXEC implementation came, they needed something to expose a uh, physical memory layout to user space. So they added system RAM on the IO memory. <laughs> Billy wants a mic. No, I, I think it actually predates that. Uh, having system RAM actually predates that because we used to um be able we, we used to do pci bar resizing ourselves uh well i guess sometimes we still do on some architectures and so you have to know where everything in physical memory is which includes ram so that you don't put a pci bar over top of your ram but 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 we didn't expose it to the user space before that i think oh uh, no we did. we did we yeah. did yeah yeah because if, if, if it's in iomam it gets maybe my archaeology wasn't right so 
uh, yeah, I mean, you know, I'm, 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 I'm thinking about how things were 20 years ago. I mean, you know, uh, it's a two years or so I did some archaeology. I think a system RAM appeared in PROC IOMM, not under the IOMM resources, but in PROC IOMM. Well, they're the same thing. Uh, Pro PROC IOMM is always no. just exposed, exposed to the IOMM yes, resource tree. Uh, I think it came in with KXX, but no, I might be that. Well, it, I think maybe on X86 it came in with KXX. But I, I, I know on we had a Italian? No, I know I know we had it before that on PRS. PRS. Anyway, it was yeah, it's a long time ago. <laughs> yeah, so these are the issues I see. Maybe I'm overreacting again and we just can't live with it. Uh, but what was I I was thinking that we need uh, some generic representation for generic coarse grain representation for the physical memory that will be consistent with what Firmer gives us and that we'll be able to keep PROC IOMM at least for several years as it is now and uh, that it will be flexible enough to accommodate architecture specific needs like uh, a, a ARM has uh, the no map areas uh, 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 X86 has a lot of additional information about how exactly reserved area should be named, ACPI something or EFI something. Uh, Palmer, maybe you too have something to add there, I don't know. Sure we will. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, as uh, there are several alternatives to do that. Uh, one is to create yet another new data structure, probably based on XRA, uh, kidding. <laughs> maple tree, maple tree. Uh, no, no, we, we'll stick to something simpler. <laughs> uh, and uh, there is a resource tree that can be extended probably or just use it. And, but then we are stuck with PROC IOMM like forever. And uh, there is MEM block that uh, already does this for ARM. Uh, it kind of does this for risk v until uh, i've heard about recent problems palmer mentioned just a few minutes ago uh, but uh, the problem with man block is that uh, for x86 the integration between e820 and man block really sucks and there's really a lot of things to do there so uh, i need volunteers anyway yes I, I volunteer to talk to you about it. I'm not sure how much I'm volunteering to do about it, but I, I oh. Oh. there is so the Harvard and Linux boot communities are working with Intel and whoever else wants to jump in on because uh, Intel has this humbly named universal firmware uh, project, <laughs> but I think we've sort of convinced them anyway that FDT would be better than what they've got planned. So, wow. so if you're all comfortable with FDT, I think that we may be able to drag it into the x86 community and if that'll work, that'll work. Uh, so I afraid it will take like 10 years or so. That's okay. I, mean, I don't plan to be I am doing this in 10 years. So it's cool. I, <laughs> right. All right, today ARM and the PowerPC use FD, some of ARMs and the PowerPC use FDT to, to communicate the memory between the firmware and the kernel, and then it's parsed into memblock. Yeah. And then it leaves, uh, instead of doing the OF node search and so on and so on, uh, we, we have everything in memblock where it's a bit nicer uh, data structure to work with. Right. So I'm okay with FDT, and there are questions over there. So throw hard. I can't throw it that far. <laughs> and they're pretty sturdy. Yeah, I was just gonna say, just using FDT doesn't really solve the problem. So on ARM64, for example, if we boot it with EFI, we need to use EFI memory map. It is not possible with the current uh, DT memory nodes and all that sort of thing to represent the same thing. So we, on ARM64, depending on how we're booted, we either use the EFI memory map in the kernel or just the DT memory nodes. The whole point of putting it into memlock is that we have that consistent representation from that point onwards. But just using DT doesn't really solve the problem. So uh, for me, the, the, the obvious thing, 
I work on Memlock, so for me, the obvious thing is to use Memlock for that. And then uh, at, for architectures uh, that uh, need the the coarse grain the representation in, in runtime, for instance, a memory code plug and so on, it just enable keep Memlock for everyone, probably for every NUMA, NUMA capable architecture. Uh, create some uh, way of uh, generating the resource tree system RAM apart from the existing man block. It can be done pretty late because it's anyway that it doesn't get used until a driver core uh, for any driver init calls. And then there is, as I said, a huge gap between a P820 to man block that somebody needs to be filled. And the idea I was toying with it for some time now to rename memblock alloc back to boot mem alloc. And after seeing tons of patches for remain rename page to folio, I think I'll send it. <laughs> uh, yes, yeah, so uh, that's pretty much all I have to say. Now I'd like to hear what others have to say. Uh, one thing you didn't touch on here is memory hot plug. A memory hot plug has its own mysterious ways. Yeah, but <laughs> should it? <laughs> I mean, if 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 you're but, using memblock as a physical memory representation, I think memblock needs to be used for hot plug. It is used already. Oh, okay. Because of PowerPC and ARM64. But on Intel. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, it goes from a CPI to memhp, right? And then memory hot plug dot C calls add memory. Then it calls memblock add, oh. uh, or maybe the other way around. I don't, I, I don't remember exactly, right? But uh, and then uh, and then it actually lets you use uh, the memory, and depending on the flags they create for memory map or maybe memory online. But I, I don't think is David here. No, he knows for sure. <laughs> but uh, there is man block add uh, after or along with the uh, add pages. So the, the information about the hot plug anyway gets from the CPI. So there is something that should parse it. Uh, X86 also does E820 add because uh, the table should be up to date because KXAC needs it. So, <laughs> Any more questions, or we just have 10 minutes for early break? Mark, do you want to come over here and... I'll just hold on to this mic. Uh, I was just going to say, you mentioned KXEC on x86, uh, you have to update the EX. I, 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 no, I don't really hear you. Sorry. Um, you mentioned that on x86 you update the E820 memory map because the next kernel might need it when you do a KXEC. Um, ARM64 takes a very different approach there where we try and keep all the firmware provided um, data structures pristine and unchanged um, and we expect the new kernel to go and reinterpret those as is so there's some different requirements across architectures there is all I wanted to point out. It, that we do that because it means that if we have a bug in the first kernel where we manipulate things but we don't inherit that into the next kernel we just can do the right thing and don't have to bodge around our bugs but, for it. Mark, do you keep the DT that you passed to the second um, kernel? We, or we you keep reconstruct whatever, it from memblock back? We keep every firmware provided data structure. So the original DT we still have. For KXEC, depending on whether you do KXEC file load or a user space KXEC, um, where you do purgatory, um, for the KXEC file load, we just pass the original DT on or a copy of it that's slightly modified with the command line, but that's basically the only modification we make. Uh, if you do a user space uh, KXEC, um, you provide your own DT, but we map, but we expose the original DT in SysFS so you can get hold of that and do whatever you want there. But KXEC still reads proc IOM to get the no. to get the areas. It, it, it reads proc IOM to figure out where it can place where to put things. Where yeah. the segments? But, uh, but it, it doesn't use proc IOM to recreate the memory map Correct. for the yeah. second kernel. Yeah. Unlike 686, that KXEC also uses proc IOM or sys firmware memory to get the new E820 for the next kernel. Are, are you sure about that? Because at least in the last few years on startup, it saves copies of E820 map. And at least when in my use, it's 
using the original one at boot time when it does a k-exec, at, at least in the stuff we're doing. That's yeah, what I, I see. I'm not sure about the EFI only systems. Yeah, I'm thinking of the EFI systems because that's all I've got. EFI only systems, k-exec reads the system room. So you mean user tool or the kernel? Because in the there kernel, is, what I've seen is... anyway E820, even though in EFI only systems yeah, internally. Yeah. And I think it gets uh, there from uh, for the for the second kernel as well. Uh, we can well we can look later. I, I'm not sure. I'm, I'm pretty not, sure that's not really no longer true. Details, but yeah, yeah I, I think nowadays if you look, it, it only came in the last couple of years, but they actually scarf away two copies. I don't know remember why, but there is one copy they restore before the kexec because we depend on that at Google. It's it's load bearing now. Okay. And uh, it ha that it ha has to work or we're screwed, but it, that's what we've seen. Well, when I check, took a look at KXX just recently, uh, yeah. they built K the new A E820 map, even on the EFI only architectures, I think, but I might be wrong. Yeah. Okay. Uh, there is one question in the chat. Uh, I don't know if it's already been answered. Uh, Hunit asks, but then how does the KXX kernel find the hot plug memory? So to it give fine. context, this was yeah, the max. when the car exec runs a when you load new when you load new kernel, there is a, no you hope there is no hot plug event. <laughs> like <laughs> a, I I don't know the details about what happens if it if there is, but at the point where the new kernel starts, there is some set of memory that exists there. It's up to date with the <laughs> the E eight hundred or whatever K K exec uses is up to date with what memory is there, and when the new kernel starts, uh, it uh, gets a table, and then if memory hot plug happens afterwards, uh, the new the second kernel will notice. Uh, yes, Arnd. Yes, yeah, so so on PowerPC the approach was. Always like we the one of the original uses of having the flattened device tree in the first place was that you can have hot plug devices which could be memory or anything else really um, and have it after k exec so with the arm approach of having the pristine um, FGT that obviously does not work so the 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 PowerPC device tree um, is kept in memory, it can get modified if another device gets added, and then after KXEC, you actually have um, a new FGT assembled from whatever the first kernel had, which is a very different approach of what we have on ARM. Yeah, I was just going to say, uh, Mark, again, um, on ARM64, we don't support um, hot plug of memory while using DT, but if we boot it with EFI and we have ACPI tables, we can use the standard mechanism for that. Um, and then when the new kernel comes online, it goes and just rediscovers the hot plug memory for the existing standard mechanisms there. So we, we can support that. It, it works. Our only requirement is that if memory exists at boot time in the, in the EFI memory map or the FDT memory map, that cannot be removed. You, you multiply, multiplicity of firmware is astonishing, yes. Uh, didn't we have anything else? Let me check chat. Uh, there was I think we are running early and we will be first for the line and then for snacks. There uh, is no nothing in the chat I checked. Okay, perfect. So if there are no more questions, then thank you, everybody. And we are starting.